So I found a way to use chaos in sequencer and render out a sequence. It's not perfect, there are weird issues that's really annoying, but at least I can get a chaos simulation all the way out to a finished render. So for this guide, I'm going to assume that you really know a little bit about chaos and what it is, but I'll show you all the steps so you can follow along anyway. So firstly, I'm going to create a new project using the third person template. I'll name my project chaos sequencer hit create I'm just gonna delete some of these so my world outline is a little bit cleaner doesn't matter if you leave them so I'll go to edit plugins and search for chaos so you need chaos editor obviously but it's usually enabled by default we're just going to enable chaos caching go yes and we want to restart yet we'll search for movie render queue and enable that and now we'll restart the project so I'll go to place actors menu and under shapes I'll add a basic sphere into the scene so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll make a very basic simulation and show you how it works in Sequencer. So I made this sphere a little bit bigger. I'm going to have it falling onto the ground and breaking into a lot of pieces. To open the content browser, I'm going to control space and make a new folder called tutorial. And then I'm going to select my sphere and up here in the drop down menu, I'm going to enter fracture mode. With the sphere selected, I'll hit new and save in the folder we just created. I'll name this GC sphere. So there are tons of options in this menu, but I won't go over them in this video because there's heaps of tutorials and video guides on YouTube covering them. We'll use the cluster tool to break the sphere a couple of times. So I'll do about 12 by 12 clusters for the first level and fracture. When you adjust the explode amount, you can see how the pieces have been fractured. And for the second level, I'll do slightly less. So four by four fracture again. So you can see for level 0 I've got 1 and level 117 and then level 2 over 500. So that's really a lot of pieces. So in the details panel of my geometry collection I'm going to search for color and turn off show bone colors. And if you expand this you can see the geometry hiding inside. I will go back to select mode. Now I'm going to adjust some of the parameters in my geometry collection. Again, there are a lot of things that you can adjust in here, but for this video, I'm just going to adjust the mass and the damage threshold. One important parameter to know is the object type. The default is dynamic, but you might want to choose something different depending on what kind of simulation that you want. So we'll hit play and see what it's like initially. Hmm. No, run away! Okay, so that looks okay. I'm just gonna try changing the mass to something like a ton. Doesn't really look all that different. Maybe like 50 tons. And try that.
So under clustering, under damage threshold, you can choose how easy each level breaks. So as you can see at 1110, um, everything breaks faster, I guess, more instantaneously. So let's just try 10,000, 1,000, and 100. I think that looks okay, so we'll just leave it there. And just to make it more fun, I'm going to change the material of the inside of the sphere. So you go to element 1 and change the material to anything you want, but I made mine gold. Save all. And... Gold! Lots of gold. White and gold. So much gold. I'm jumping on gold. I sometimes wonder if I'm learning Unreal Engine just to fulfill my fantasies. Okay, so before we make a sequence, we need a cache manager and a cache player. So in the content browser, go to the folder that we created earlier and right click, create a new blueprint class and click on all classes and search for chaos. Click on chaos cache manager and I'll name this CC underscore manager. And we'll right click again another blueprint class and search for chaos again and chaos cache player this time and I'll name this cc underscore player and I'll select both of these and drag it onto the scene so first off we'll just select the cc manager and in the cache collection, we need to make a new chaos cache collection. So create new asset, chaos cache collection, and we'll put it in our tutorial folder again. I'll name it cc underscore collection. And make sure the cache mode is in record. And we need to add a new component in the observed components. We'll name the cache gold cache. For the component reference, we need to find our geometry collection. So under GC sphere, select the geometry collection component and we'll leave everything else as is. So now we need to record the cache. So making sure the mode is in record, hit the play button. and leave it until everything sort of stops. It's doing weird things. Okay, so now if you change the mode to play and then adjust the start time, you can scrub through the recorded cache. So now find your CC player in the world outliner and select it. So for your cache collection, select the one you've made earlier and under observed components, we need to add the geometry collection we made as well. So we'll change the cache name to gold cache like we did before. And for the component reference, find GC sphere and geometry collection component. Now we will create a sequence, add label sequence up here, and we'll just make it in our tutorials folder and name it gold. I'll change the frame rate to 24 frames per second. So in order to make this work in the sequencer, we'll select the GC sphere and drag it into our timeline and add track and go attach new binding and cc player not the manager the player 
And as soon as we add the new binding, the sphere moves for some reason. I have no idea why. But in order to mitigate this, go to your GC sphere, add new track and click on transform. And under transform and location, change the X and Y values to zero and it should come back to its original location. Now to make the simulation play, go to your CC player in sequencer, add new track and at the bottom add start time and I'll try changing the start time value and you can see the simulation working in sequencer. So I'll change the start time back to zero and add a key and I will add another key at the end of the simulation. That's a little bit too fast. So I'll move the second key over here and make it much slower. So you can animate the time value and make it play however you want in your sequence. So now we have the simulation animated and working in our sequence, playing to my desired speed. Now I'll add a camera in my sequence as I'll do normally with any other sequence. And I'll make the focal length 50 mil and aperture 1.4. And I'll just add a simple animation to my camera maybe follow the sphere as it crashes down onto the ground. Cool, we now have the gold sphere animated and the camera following the action as well. So just for fun, I'm going to make the camera go out of focus at the moment the sphere touches the ground. Okay, so I'm happy with my sequence. Let's try rendering this. Click on the render movie button to open the movie render queue. Go to settings. Um, so you can see the sequence is added already. If it's not, you can hit the plus sign to add your sequence. So settings, I'm going to delete the JPEG sequence and leave the deferred rendering. I actually tried this with Path Tracer and unfortunately it doesn't work. It the animation just disappears. I'm going to add anti-aliasing and then EXR sequence. And that's all we need. I'm going to change the spatial sample to 4 and temporal sample to 8. And override anti-aliasing and leave method at none. In the output, I'll leave it at 1080 and the output directory as default. Hit render. Immediately, you can see the camera animation is lagging behind the sphere. So this was one of the other issues I was having. The animation timing somehow offsets in the render and becomes different to how it was in the editor. So you could probably mitigate this issue by going back to your sequence and compensating for the offset time, but I'm not going to bother in this video. And I had this issue in some of my tests, but not all of them. I couldn't really figure out what was causing it. If someone knows why it's happening, please let me know. So the render's done. I'm going to close Unreal and find my render output folder and we'll review this in Resolve. So new project in DaVinci, I'm going to go to settings and change the color science to ASUS CCT and then output transform to Rec709. This is because we rendered with EXR files and the color space is different. So I'm going to drag all my rendered files to DaVinci. Right click on the clip and under ASUS input transform, I'm going to select ASUS CG. Your menu might look a little bit different. I haven't updated DaVinci in a long time. So I'm going to right click on the clip and create new timeline. I'll go to the color tab and add a new node 
maybe decrease the saturation a little bit and the tint looks slightly off so I'll leave it at 60 and add a smidgen of sharply now I'll go to export and name my clip and we'll just export it in H.264 So here's my final video. Um, as we talked about earlier, the animation timing is a little bit off, but at least using this method, you can get the chaos simulation working in sequencer and actually get it rendered out. If you know a better way of doing it or how to get around the issues that we talked about, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear them. Thank you for watching.